Navy EOD eliminates explosive threats so that the fleet and the nation can fight and win wherever, whenever, and however it chooses. Navy EOD is oftentimes chosen because we have the largest portfolio of UUVs within the Navy. We send out our unmanned underwater vehicles, which for us are Mark 18 Mod 1 or Mark 18 Mod 2 vehicles to do what's called a search and classify mission. They run in a lawnmower-like pattern and they collect a bunch of side scan sonar data or volumetric data that is then later downloaded and processed. So to get these unmanned underwater vehicles in the water and operational, they use a lot of pre-mission computers, they use a lot of planning and organic support necessary to charge the vehicles, and then they utilize ribs, which are rigid hull inflatable boats, and cricks, which are small combat rubber raid craft, to deploy these vehicles. Once that vehicle runs its mission, it comes back, it's downloaded, and then the human operator looks for anomalies within that data set to determine what is mine-like and what is not mine-like. So our entire search classify phase is done by unmanned systems. Once they consolidate all the different mine-like targets within that mission, it goes on what's called a post-mission data report, which then goes to a targeting board, which is then hosted by the combat and control node. The C2 then tasks either the EOD platoon or the unmanned systems personnel with a reacquire ID mission. Reacquire ID missions can be done by a diver. It can be done by a remote operated vehicle used to identify or verify a mine by a EOD human operator on one side, and it's a tethered robot that then can go into the water column and it does what's called a visual identification of that mine. Or it can be done by another Mark 18 Mod 1 running a star-like pattern over an object. This type of technology is imperative to the safety of the sailors because we could theoretically remove the diver out of the minefield for certain types of scenarios. So after we verified that something is a mine, the Mine Countermeasures Commander determines what we do with that item. We could neutralize it, which essentially renders it incapable of firing as designed. We could countermine it, which is just to get rid of it where it sits. Or we could do a combination of a neutralization with a race to a beach procedure to bring it up on a beach for further exploitation and attribution. For this operation, we integrated with the Marine Corps for the exploitation portion of this. Our team organically has what's called a level one exploitation capability. So we can do general reconnaissance, we can take photos, and we can even do x-rays if needed. The level two analysis is usually done by another team, like the Expeditionary Exploitation Unit 1, and they can do further forensics and diagnostics to determine different characteristics of the mine. So it's gonna be imperative for us to have these integration events so that if one day we have to take the fight to the Pacific, we've worked together, we know how each other works, and we can integrate seamlessly in order to ensure that our nation can fight and win wherever it chooses. For us, we need to leverage these unmanned systems and these systems of systems to make sure that they're networked, they can communicate, and then we can operate in disaggregated units of action.